Item A3 in the rubric has to do with alignment of objectives. In A1, reviewers make sure there are objectives for every unit. For A2, reviewers make sure those objectives are active and measurable. And for A3, reviewers make sure that the module content is aligned with all the objectives. Specifically, your reviewers will look in each module to determine if the content and activities present are clearly related to the stated learning objectives, and they will ensure the content is sufficient for students to meet those objectives. Here's aligned examples. So let's say a module includes the following learning objective, examine and summarize social movements associated with California progressivism. Your reviewers will be looking to make sure the same module contains several primary sources from people of the time period describing their experience and involvement in social reform and in assignments in which students summarize it, or something like that. <laughs> if the learning objective states define basic terms related to databases, the, your reviewers will want to see the module contains a page labeled basic terms and vocabulary or an assignment that relates to basic terms and vocabulary. Incomplete examples usually leave something out or put too much in. So a module might include, include a learning objective like describe the various layers of earth and how each behaves. But the module content could only be related to earth's magnetic field and plate tectonics. So what does that have to do with the layers of the earth? In a similar way, a stated learning objective might be compare the fields of psychology, but the module only contains content and activities about clinical psychology and no way for the students to compare various fields of psychology. Ultimately, you want to make sure whatever objectives you're aiming for with the students in each module, you're providing content and activities that relate directly to those objectives. One thing to look out for is to be sure each module has adequate material to meet the objectives, but not so much that it's overwhelming. The curse of the expert is we have a tendency to give too much information, and on the flip side, we may overestimate students' prior knowledge and leave out key points and information. If you do find yourself providing content that is interesting but extraneous to the unit learning goals, you can separate it out and clearly label it as optional and still included in the course. Unit content and activities should be directly related to the unit learning objectives so that the student's attention is always focused on what you want them to learn and do within each module unit. When this relationship is present, it's easy to ensure the coherence and effectiveness of the instruction.